All right, for the function, g is defined and differentiable on the closed interval from negative 7 to 5 and satisfies that at 0, the function of g is 5. y is the derivative of g. Okay, it's a semicircle right here and three segments. Good. If I want to find g3 and g negative 2, to find g3, well, what you have to do is you have to start at 5. So at 0, which is 5. So if I want g3, don't you start with a value of 5 at 0. And you have to sum up the change, because g prime is the change. Remember, this is g prime, and I want g. So if I want g, I have to integrate this. So I integrate this from 0 to 3 to see the change from 0 to 3. Right, 0 to 3. And then to find the change, to integrate this, didn't they do this semicircle here? Aren't they finding this area and this? That's what they're doing. 5 is the initial amount. This right here is this red area. This 3 over 2 is this little triangle. The end, that's your result. You don't have a calculator, so that's good enough. Now, if I wanted g of negative 2, don't you want to start at negative 2? Start with your 5. Go over to 0 to negative 2. Well, for that one, isn't it that area right there? Now, so isn't this and this the same? So wasn't that pi in the previous problem? So isn't that also pi? Now, the question is, why is it negative pi? Why isn't it? I thought we added it. Well, isn't your integral backwards? Your integral should be technically the 0 on top, the negative 2 on bottom. So you flip it, make it a negative, or basically you're doing the opposite of that area. So it's 5 minus pi, not 5 plus pi. Now, find the x-coordinate for points of inflections for g, which is y, on the interval. Explain your reasonings. Now, here's where it gets confusing again. If I want points of inflections, isn't that where the second derivative of g is 0 or undefined? All right, so a second derivative, a point of inflection, is what I'm looking for is I'm looking for g double prime x equaling 0 or does not exist. Are you okay? That's what I'm looking for. Now, that's what we were looking for. Now, the function is g prime. All right. So I want to know where this, and I want to know where it changes. It has to be equal to 0, doesn't exist, and actually change um, concavity. But, so looking at this, if this is g prime, and I want g double prime, aren't I talking about the slopes of this? Yes. If this is g prime, and I want g double prime, so aren't I looking at slopes of this graph? So don't I want to know where the slopes of this graph right here are zero or undefined? So where are the slopes of this graph zero or undefined? Well, I see one right there, right there, right there, and right there. Those four spots, the slope is zero or undefined. Now, you then have to check to make sure it actually changes concavity, meaning changing on this situation changes slope. So what's the slope here? Isn't it positive and isn't it positive there? So did it change slope sign at that point? No. So that would not be a point of inflection. Here, isn't the point slope positive and the slope negative? So it did change. That's a point of inflection. Isn't the slope negative and now it's positive? That's a point of inflection. Isn't the slope positive and now it's negative? Point of inflection. So these three are points of inflections. Let's look what they said down here. Okay, points of inflection is at 0, 2, and 3. 0, 2, and 3. Because g prime changes from increasing to decreasing at 0 and 3. So at here and here is the slope changing from increasing to decreasing. Actually, I said that wrong. The slope... Are you okay? g prime is increasing, meaning the derivative is positive. Catch that real quick? g prime increasing means second derivative positive. g prime decreasing means second derivative negative. So what it's saying is a second derivative change from positive to negative. Be careful how they wrote that. A lot of you would mess up saying the graph, it, g, you want to say g prime. It's very important that g prime is increasing, meaning the second derivative is positive. 
the second derivative is negative. So either write as second derivative positive, second derivative negative, or put first derivative increasing, first derivative decreasing. You need some sort of description that's very precise. And then here, g prime goes from decreasing to increasing at 2, because it goes from downhill to uphill. So you've got to be careful on that precision. Okay, h is this function. The x-coordinates um, of each critical point h where, on this interval, and classify each critical point as a relative min, relative max, or neither. Explain your reasoning. So basically, you want to find the critical numbers, critical points, and then what type are they for this function h. So to find a critical number, don't you take the derivative set equal to 0, or undefined. So let's first take the derivative of this. What's the derivative of g? Isn't that g prime? And what would be the derivative of this? Isn't that just negative x? So watch this. This is going to get a little weird looking. All right, here we go. Isn't the derivative of h, we just said, g prime negative x? Don't you want to know where it equals 0 or undefined? So to look at where this equals 0, it will be easier to add the x over and look where g prime x equals x. Yeah. Where g prime x equals x, well, look at the graph. Let's go back to the graph. If we go back to this graph, can you see that at this point, the graph is g prime, right? Isn't the x value and the y value the same? Mm -hmm. g prime x is equal to x. So there, right there is a coordinate where it could be a point of inflection. Sorry, not a point of inflection. A critical number. And then, can you also tell right there on the circle? Right there at the edge of that circle, couldn't it also be, isn't the height and base the same, the x and y value? So right there and right there. Now that one's pretty easy to, to, to think about. It's like, whew, yes, this one sucks. Because you have to do a whole bunch of work to find that point right there. So we're going to look at these two points and see if they are critical numbers. If they're critical numbers and then if they change what type they are. All right. So we look at this information. I'm going to try to explain this the best I can in a quick manner. Um, G prime, well this right here is the distance formula, kind of, this is the area of a circle, sorry, the formula for a circle, because if you look back at this, we need to find that right there, sorry, we need to find this value, we need to find the x and y value to get that, okay, to find, we need to find out how far over is that point, all right, so that would be a 45 degree angle, and what they did, it looks like, is they made this equation because of circles. They thought about how circles are. Um, or they kind of also could think of Pythagorean theorem. Could help a little bit. Anyways, they got a circle formula. All right. And they want to know from the circle formula, they got that square root of 2 would be, they'd be the same. Um, and then it could, so it would be, also, at x equals 3 also works. Now, um, let's see. Right here, when they plug the values in, when they plug a value into the interval 0 to pi over 2 for h prime, do you see they got positive? And from 0, from pi, let's say pi over 2, from 0 to square root 2, they got a slope of positive. Here, they got a slope of what? negative for the second interval to 5. Well, if, all, if this whole interval is, is negative, would 3 have been a critical number? Did it change? No, if this, is, if this whole, ne from square to 2 to 5, is all negative the whole way, oh, then that 3 would not have a critical number, a relative max or min. So just at the square root of 2. And how do they know it's a relative max? Because it goes from positive to negative. Positive and negative is a max. How do we know it's negative? Positive and negative is a max. Okay. Um, and 3 is non-existent because 3 does not have a change since it's all negative. The slopes are all negative. So um, now, how do they get a square root of 2 from this? Um, I'm trying to remember how that happened. 
Um, and I forgot how that happens. S basically, you want to know where it equals x. So you set this function equal to x and solve. You set this function equal to x and you solve it, you get square root of 2. When you set this function equal to x, see right there? And solve it, you get this value. Now, it would, be pos it would be positive and negative. No, it wouldn't be. So that would be that value. You set up your interval. You, ch you check values on the intervals. All right. All right. But this is kind of tricky, and especially, so the only one is at square root of 2. 3 did not because there was no change of slope.